Hello students and welcome to today's class. Today we'll be talking about one of the very important stages in the development of human civilization. And the topic of the today's class is Mesolithic period. And in the Mesolithic, I'll be discussing, for example, the concept, how this Mesolithic came into existence, who uses the term, for example, and why he used it. Second, we'll be looking at some of the very important tools and even the areas or the sites of distribution. There are certain objectives of the today's topic which will help us in understanding the Mesolithic terminologies. Microlithic tools, Mesolithic cultures of Europe and Mesolithic sites of South Asia. First we will be discussing the terminology. The term Mesolithic is derived from two Greek words. One is Mesos, which means middle, and second is Lethos, which means stone. So therefore, which means the middle stone age. This period comes in between the Upper Paleolithic and the Neolithic period in the development of the stone ages. It is also referred as the final phase of hunting gathering stages between the last glacial maximum and the Neolithic revolution. Hodder Westrop was the first person who coined the term Mesolithic in 1866. However, John Evans, a proponent of the British school, criticized the usage of the term Mesolithic, believing that there was no need for any intermediate period between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic. According to John Evans, the ages blended together like the colors of a rainbow. So there is no need for an intermediate stone age. Hodder Westrup was supported by a European school headed by Jabril D. Mortillel, who believed that there was a gap between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic periods. Then came another very important archaeologist whose name was Barry Gordon Child. In his work, The Dawn of Europe, Child affirms the term Mesolithic, and since then, a large amount of data from the surface explorations and even excavations carried out at many places was referred to as belonging to this transitional phase, which was also known as the Mesolithic period between the Paleolithic and the Neolithic ages. The Paleolithic was an age of purely hunting and gathering, whereas in the Neolithic, domestication of plants and animals had occurred. Some Mesolithic communities continued with intensive hunting. However, others started practicing domestication of plants and animals. The Mesolithic and Epipaleolithic terms are mostly referred to as the same Stone Age periods. Although they have different usage conventions, the names you know, Mesolithic and Epipaleolithic continued to be in conflict. The name Mesolithic is nearly always used in Northern European archaeology, for example, for archaeological sites in Great Britain, Germany, Scandinavia, Ukraine and parts of Russia. However, the term Epipaleolithic is used in other regions. Some authors refer to all hunting gathering societies that existed after the last glacial maximum as Mesolithic, regardless of whether they were transitioning to agriculture or not, which is a very important feature of the Mesolithic economy. Additionally, the terminology seems to be very different from subfields of archaeology, with Mesolithic generally used in European archaeology and Epipaleolithic being more popular in Near Eastern archaeology. The people, those who were living in the Mesolithic period, made very specific stone tools which came to be known as the microliths. Towards the end of the Pleistocene or the beginning of the Holocene, there were certain changes in the stone tool kits of the prehistoric humans and people started making and using very small tools referred to by prehistorians as the microlithic tools. 
these small stone tools mostly made of chert or flint usually in geometrical shapes and often set in a bone or wooden heft are called microliths these were made by humans from 35000 years to around 3000 years ago across the globe in different continents including asia africa europe and australia microliths differ in length from 1 cm to 5 cm these tools were made on short parallel sided blades made of cryptocrystalline silica stone such as quartzite jasper agate chert and even chalcedony Microliths also include miniature virgins of some of the upper Paleolithic tool types such as burins, scrapers and points along with tools of geometrical shapes such as lunates, triangles, rhomboids, trapez and trapezoids. Microliths were produced by abrupt or truncated retrenching leaving pieces of waste called microburin. There are two types of microliths. One is laminar microlith and second is geometrical microlith. Laminar microliths are usually larger than geometrical microliths. While geometrical microliths are the typical tools of the Mesolithic period and are smaller in size than the laminar microliths. The need for such small tools can be assessed through ethnographic evidences from various communities of the world where such kinds of tools are still in use. The study of these communities shows that the microliths were sometimes used without being shafted, but the majority of the tool types, single or large numbers, were shafted into wooden or bone handlers. These tools were used to make spearheads, arrowheads, knives, draggers, aces, and even sickles. There is a possibility that poison might have been applied to their tips and barbs, generally to increase their lethality. The development of the Mesolithic cultures was a jump towards the changes in the nature of settlements of humans throughout the world. With the dawn of the Holocene in different parts of the world, many changes were witnessed as far as the usage of the tool kits of the humans and the subsistence strategies were concerned. The stone tools became increasingly smaller in size and the hunting gathering strategies gave way to the domestication of plants and even animals. These changes were felt in the archaeological cultures of many areas. Now to have an understanding of the development of the Mesolithic stage of the stone ages one needs to understand its growth from a global perspective. Some of the areas who produced the evidences are discussed below. Number first is the Azilian culture. The name Azilian was first used by Edward Petty, who excavated the masked Azil site in 1887. On the basis of certain similarities at different sites, Azilian culture is the name given to the Mesolithic industry of the franco cantabrian region, which includes the northern Spain and southern France. The culture is dated between 1,2500 to 1 years ago. The publication of the book Men of the Old Stone Age in 1916 by Henry Osborne brought to the forefront, which led to its popularity. The book deals with Azilian sites wherever flattened barbed harpoons and points of deer antlers were found. The artifacts from this culture include projectile points or microliths with rounded retouched bags, tablets with decorations and bone harpoons which were first discovered in the Arise River. About 37 Azilian sites have been discovered with features including engraved and painted pebbles. The decorations are simple patterns of zigzags, dots and even stripes with same crosses. The color is usually red because of iron oxide 
and sometimes black colored pebbles were also found. Some sites far from the sea also have color made in pectin salt water scallop shells. The repeated combinations of motifs led E. Pete to believe that these pebbles carried a primitive writing system. The second important Mesolithic culture is the Iron Gates Mesolithic culture. Located on the Danube River in Romania and Serbia, a Mesolithic archaeological complex is identified, named as the Iron Gates Mesolithic culture, which dates between 13,000 and 6,000 BCE. It was during the dam construction which led to the discovery of 50 caves and other open sites where a large number of ancient artifacts, burial sites and art were found. On the basis of carbon-14 dating and isotope analysis, the culture was dated to the Mesolithic and even the early Neolithic periods. While excavating the culture, archaeologists came across various tools and weapons made of boar tusks, bones and red deer antlers. Some Mesolithic tools include hooves, owls, arrowheads and scrappers made of boar tusks, bones and red deer they have also been found. Archaeologists have excavated various burials at different sites of iron gates which include primary inhumation, secondary inhumation, collective burials and cremation. The primary inhumations are similar to modern day burials, where burials consist of a person being in a spine position with their hands lying in the sides or on the chest. The secondary inhumation consists of separate body parts like crania and jaw bones which were found on various excavated burials in the iron gates. There are various instances where collective burials were observed along the evidence of cremation including at the site of Lasek. Some of the burials have grave goods which consist of animal skulls, antlers, microliths and even ornaments. The most notable object found from burials are marine shells and carved pharyngeal teeth beads. The Lepenske weir, which is a site, it yields evidence of ornamental boulders and sculptures made from coarse grained sandstone. The most prominent carving consists of a head which has eyebrows, ears, eyes, nose and even mouth. Now we will be coming to another important Mesolithic culture which is known as Tardinocean culture. Tardinocean also known as Buronian culture is associated with the Mesolithic period. The culture was named after its first excavated site which is known as Fur N. Tardinois in France by an archaeologist who is known as E. Tate in 1885. Tardin Ocean culture spreads over France, Belgium, Britain and even Spain. Archaeologists have dated this culture between 9000 and 6000 BCE. The microliths discovered from various sites of this culture include scalene triangles, chisel ended arrowheads and small blades which were made possibly with the pressure technique. These tools along with the asymmetrical trapezoids and long blades are the hallmarks of this culture. Geometric microliths, microbiran, scalene triangles, trapezoids and points with concave bases distinguish it from the prayer cultures of the region. An ill-defined set of Mesolithic assemblies that are primarily distinguished by the presence of asymmetrical trapezes and long blades are referred to as the Tardinosium. Now we will be talking about the kitchen midden culture and its terminology. Kitchen middens are piles of trash left behind the ancient communities. More precisely, they are the coastal deposits that are mostly made up of shell fragments and other related cultural materials. Middens are an important source of ecological and cultural data and were first examined in Denmark 
in the year 1848. In the Americas, kitchen middens also referred to as the shell mounds, typically originate from the late Mesolithic culture. They contain objects which can be dated and provides insight into the lifestyle and technology of ancient humans. Analysis of animal remains reveal information about the environment, the time of year, the duration of habitation, hunting habits, and the potential for domestication even. These middens typically only represent a single element of the sophisticated foraging tactics used by the nomadic hunter-gatherers. In a more specific meaning, the word kitchen midden refers to enormous mounds of shells with associated cultural detritus seen at some coastal sites. The phrase kitchen midden is used in a generic sense to indicate an archaeological deposit consisting mostly of waste from meal preparation. The Austrian complex in northern Spain and the Ertibol civilization in Scandinavia are examples of the latter. At the mouth of the Targus in Portugal, there is another group of sites. Shalmidens are a distinctive aspect of Mesolithic Atlantic, but are also found in the Mediterranean. For instance, Elie de Royo in the Bay of Marseilles features magnificent limpet middens that may date from 6000 to 5000 BC. Recent research on shell middens had tended to emphasize that while they frequently represent the most striking physical evidence of a hunting and gathering economy in terms of total nutrition, they may only represent a tiny or seasonal component of a far more complex foraging strategy. Even while maritime resources supported a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, Hunting seabirds, gathering eggs, and fishing may have been more significant activities due to their nutritional importance. Dear students, up to now we have discussed the evolution of the Mesolithic cultures in the world context. Now the shift of the today's lecture is towards the development of these cultures in the southwestern Asia. Southwest Asia has been a fascinating region, particularly for the expansion of plant and animal domestication. It is the area that developed in the center of food production. The Mushabian and Kebarian cultures, which were followed by the Natufian civilization, can be seen as the beginning during the Mesolithic era. Around 14,000 to 12,800 years BP, the Mushabian culture emerged in the Eastern Mediterranean. This culture is characterized by small geometric microliths. A distinctive feature of the Kibaran culture, which sprang from around 13,500 to 11,500 BP. Sorry, text I go. A distinctive feature of the Kibaran culture, which sprang from 13,500 up to around 11,500 BP is the removal of bladelets from the core. The bladelets were a kind of shaped microliths with a size between 4 and 7 mm. The practice of hunting and gathering served as the foundation of the economy of this culture. Southwest Asia experienced changes in the climate and vegetation around 1300 BP. Ground stone tools, which is one of the very important features of the Neolithic culture, such as pestles and mortars and other implements, they were also found. Agriculture may have started as early as 12,500 to 10,200 BP in the Levant in the Natufian culture. As a result, it is considered to be the transition between the Mesolithic and the Neolithic stages. Village settlements and a sedentary way of life were characteristics of this culture. Microliths, barons, borers, scrappers, blades, knives 
and pigs served as the cultural identifiers of this culture. Arrowheads were later discovered. Additionally, ground stone tools and stone vessels were also discovered, such as curnas, pestles, pounders, and others. The presence of fish hooks and nets indicates how important fish was to this culture's diet. The evidence shows that the people of this culture were still hunters and gatherers and that they hunted gazelles, deer, wild goats and other animals. Based on their research, archaeologists Anna Cohen and Offer Bar Yosef claim that the early Natufian culture with its numerous sites located throughout the Levant exhibits sedentarism. They claimed it was a complex hunter-gatherer culture with underground stores, tombs, home, flint artifacts, stone artifacts, and bone artifacts. Now we'll be talking about the development of the Mesolithic cultures in the context of South Asian landscape. Mesolithic sites in South Asia have been found in different parts which were unhabituated in earlier periods. Archaeologists believe that it was the overpopulation and favorable environmental conditions which prompted the migration of humans to these new areas. The development of the Mesolithic cultures in South Asia is represented by many archaeological settlements. And in today's lecture, we'll be talking about some of the settlements or archaeological sites which were habitated during the Mesolithic culture. And among them, Chopani Mando is one of the very important Mesolithic sites. Chopani Mando is located in the Balan Valley during the archaeological excavations. 1.55 meters thick occupational deposits was revealed. These deposits, they were divided into three periods of occupation. Period 1 belonged to the Epipaleolithic, while as period 2nd and period 3rd belonged to the Mesolithic period. Period 2nd was further subdivided into two phases, 2nd A and 2nd B. In 2nd A, the excavation revealed various non-geometrical microliths like blades, scrapers, points, borers, all almost made of chert. The tools which were excavated in period B are all geometrical microliths. The period third revealed microliths, handmade pottery with cord impressed patterns, anvils, hammer stones, kernels, mullers, and ring stones. The bones which were excavated from the site include the wild sheep and goat, the burnt clay with reed impressions showed that Mesolithic people at Chopani Mando lived in wattle and daub huts. The excavation is revealed two round huts at level 2nd A, five round huts at level 2nd B, and 13 round and oval huts from level 3. These huts are clustered very close to each other. There is also evidence of wild rice being consumed by the people at Chopani Mando. Now, the second important archaeological site in South Asian context belonging to the Mesolithic period is Sarai Nahar Rai. This is a Mesolithic site which is located on the dried Oxbow Lake in the Uttar Pradesh, state of India. During the excavations, various microliths were found here along with bones of animals including bison, steak, fish, rhinoceros and tortoise. The site yields evidence of 11 human burials in which 9 men, 4 women and a child were buried. One of the buried skeletons has arrows embedded in its ribs which indicates that these people might have been killed. Their grave goods include animal bones, microliths and shells. Another Mesolithic site located on the bank of the Oxbow Lake is Mahadaha. During excavations at Mahadaha, archaeologists have unearthed various prehistoric deposits 
associated with habitation and butchering. The microliths excavated here were made of chert, chalcedony, quartz, agate, and crystal, which must have been brought from very long distances to this particular site. Apart from tools, the site gave evidences about 28 burials of 30 individuals, including two instances where men and women are buried together. These burials have been found, however, in the habitational site. The grave goods include microliths, shells, burnt pieces of animal bones, rings, bone arrowheads, and okra pieces. From the butchering area, bones of various animals were also found, which includes wild cattle, pigs, deer, hippopotamus, and turtle. From the discovered remains, it is believed that the people were very tall, men were up to 1.90 meters, and women were 1.62 to 1.76 meters. Among the skeletons discovered, five skeletons are aged less than 18 years old, six belong to the age group of 18 to 40, and only one is aged above 40. The site helps us understand the life expectancy of people in the Mesolithic period. Now coming to another important settlement which is known as Bagur. Bagur in Rajasthan is one of the best ever documented Mesolithic settlements of South Asia. The archaeologists have uncovered three occupational levels representing the site's habitation for around 5000 years. Period 1 of occupation is dated between 5000 to 2800 BCE and this was the Mesolithic period and period 2nd is Chalcolithic then period 3rd gave us evidences about the presence of iron. During the excavation at the settlement, various microliths have been discovered and these microliths of period 1 are made from locally available materials of chert and cords. Most of them were blades including a large number of geometrical tools such as triangles and trapezes. The house floors at Bagur were paved with stone slabs and some stones marking the outline of shelters have been found. A butchering area was also identified where a large number of bone remains were found. The site yielded only one burial without grave goods. The tools discovered here include ring stones which are probably used as a hammer to make microliths, red ochre pieces and rubbing stones for grinding food and kernels. The bones of wild animals have been discovered which include wild cattle, two kinds of deer, pigs, rats, jackals, turtles, fish and monitor lizards. The bones of domesticated animals including sheep and goats and cattle were also found here. According to some archaeologists, there is a possibility that small pieces of pottery which were found here seems to have belonged to the Mesolithic period. Microlithic sites discovered in Mumbai in the peninsular India appear to reflect coastal Mesolithic cultures that probably relied on marine resources for their food. Additionally, microliths have been discovered in different regions of Maharashtra. The microliths further south are primarily formed of quartz. They have been discovered in Goa at Nagarjun Konda in southern Andhra Pradesh, in Jalahali and Kibanahali near Bangalore in Karnataka and at Renigunta in the Chittor district of the Andhra Pradesh. There are numerous examples of temporary Mesolithic campsites even throughout the subcontinent, but only places like Sarai Naharai, Damdama, Mahadaha and Chopani Mando were continuously inhabited. This can be concluded based on the type of archaeological evidence and some more in-depth analysis of the faunal material. The evidence of formal ceremonial burials at several sites 
where the remains were often laid out in a west to east direction or the opposite occasionally along with grave goods substantiated the prevalence of rites related to death. Grave items are frequently interpreted as evidence of some form of belief in the afterlife. This may well be the case, however, anthropological research has shown that certain societies bury the personal possessions with the deceased body because they believe that it will bring bad luck to the living. Jewelry pieces discovered show a tradition of beautifying the dead before burial and could be an indication of high ranking members of the society even. So with this, we have come to the end of the today's lecture. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you.